Well, I'm Elaine Murray and I'm leader of Dumfries and Galloway Council. The council continues to provide critical services right across the region in response to the coronavirus epidemic. We are updating our social media and our website regularly, but we have a new way of communicating with you. We are going to introduce a series of webinars which will be question and answer led sessions on a number of top topics including children and young people, uh, business support, community support and staffing issues. This will be your chance to get answers to the questions which you want to ask. I hope you enjoy taking part in the webinar. By working together we will defeat COVID-19. Thank you for taking part. Hi, I'm Stuart Hamilton, Award Officer with Dumfries and Galloway Council. The response from the third and voluntary sectors in our region to COVID-19 has been tremendous. Thousands of people have been supported within their communities and within their own homes. Coordinating this huge community response to the pandemic whilst challenging has also been very rewarding for many. Organisations, communities and individuals have reconnected and we have all embraced the challenge of using new technologies. Engagement, whether that be in the workplace, third sector, voluntary sector, in communities and with individuals, has all moved at pace to digital and online platforms successfully. Maintaining good quality engagement has never been more important. And there are so many examples of organisations adapting to ensure that people remain connected with to services, have influence over their planning and delivery, and form ongoing relationships to work together to improve lives. For community councils who have a statutory responsibility to engage with their community, it was another learning curve. The scheme of establishment for community councils provides very specific guidance regarding their timing and format of meetings, and this raised a number of questions in the face of COVID-19. We'll hear from a community council shortly about how they've adapted to ensure that they are continuing to engage with their community during this time. I know that many individuals and organisations are now looking at how the learning around digital and online engagement from during this period can be taken forward in the future. In this webinar, we are going to explore some of the resources available to us all to support organisations to engage effectively digitally and online with their audience, members or community. And we'll hear personal testimonies from organisations from across Dumfries and Galloway who have responded to COVID-19 and adapted their engagement accordingly. I hope you enjoy the webinar. So my name is Kirsten McEwen. I am the Communications Manager for the Stove Network on Dumfries High Street. The Stove is a community organisation and we really have creativity at our core. Um, we have a cafe as well, which on regular life is open Monday to Saturday. Um, and it hosts a series of events such as gigs, open mic nights, book launches and the stove also runs a regular programme of events as well. Um, we do public art installations, festivals, um, performance art as well. A full plate then. Sure is. Yes. So the stove regularly works with local people, young people, artists from around the region to deliver our programme of events and work with them to create public art. Um, and the stove is very much about collaboration, um, collaborating with our community, collaborating with artists, collaborating with other organisations and of course we very much engage with our community and our membership in person, that's why the cafe space is so important to us, that's why our events are so important for networking and so obviously when the lockdown was announced we realised that we really needed to shift our way of working in order to be able to serve our community as best as we could um, and so we kind of came up with a new concept and a new way of working through a project called Homegrown um, and that was very much about um, working under four core values which were perseverance, solidarity, open-heartedness and insight. And so what we encouraged our local community to do was to respond to these themes through regular creative challenges. Um, and these were open to everybody, whether or not you're an established artist, you're working from home, you're a family, you're a young person. And we made sure that these 
challenges where you were able to do them on your daily walk or in isolation. Um, and another way which we really engaged with our community was through micro commissions um, and these were regular ways in which we could still work with local artists and they were able to use the stove platform to engage with our community as well. Fantastic and that was quite well received by your, your network. It was yeah. yeah I think that it was great for us to be able to continue to work despite the pandemic and it was really good for us to be able to continue to engage with the people that we regularly work with but it also gave us a really great opportunity to engage with people who hadn't necessarily engaged with us before through these challenges and commissions so in that way we've kind of built up a brand new sort of community. So we were in quite a lucky position when the lockdown was announced. The stove um, does have a really good sort of strategy for online engagement and um, we do um, regular posts on our social media pages. We have um, somebody that updates our website regularly. Um, we do monthly newsletters that, that go out to the Stove members. So we were in a really good starting position um, and it was just a case of building it up from there. Um, so with our homegrown project we really needed to focus on creating its own sort of space within the Stove digital world. So what we did was we created um, its own web page and we used that as a way to communicate regular updates but as well as regular updates for what was going on within the art and cultural world and what was going on with Dumfries as well. Um, another way in which we've been able to continue our engagement is um, continuing to do two of our regular stove events. So Brave New Words, which is our open mic night and Real to Real, which is our monthly film screening. Um, so the way that we've done that is uh, doing like online premieres on Facebook. So that in itself was quite difficult to figure out how to best put them out on, on platforms, but it really was a case of trial and error. Um, but we got there in the end. I think that with more and more people being at home, more and more people being online, on social media, and, and paying attention to what's going on, we've really been able to focus on, on who our audience is and what our audience wants um, and I think that you know through putting out especially the creative challenges we've been able to expose people to a whole new way of, of being creative that they might have not been able to do before but also it's not it's not something that you're doing on your own you're you're doing it with the stove essentially and you're doing it with other members of the stove and it's going online it's going on a platform so being able to build that community spirit with people that we might not have engaged with before was something really lovely to see, to, to be able to encourage everybody to take part. Um, and right. an, another way um, is that we have kind of tried to really continue a conversation um, around what's going on and use our website and our monthly newsletters as a resource page. Um, and we recently um, released a document called the Embers Report, which was um, a major report on the role of creative placemaking. So I think that's quite relevant to what the future of, of high streets and towns might look like in a post-COVID world. So of course we are very hopeful that in, in some way that you know we'll be able to resume uh, real life events, but um, it seems that social distancing will have to stay in place for a long time and in that way we're really limiting you know, who can come to events, how many people can come to events. So, you know, we are really aware that we will have to really continue with digital platforms. Um, we have a series of projects that are kind of in the works just now and we've planned a lot of ways in which people can engage online as well as perhaps in person if possible. Um, and I think it's really just about taking advantage of, of what's accessible. So obviously you have your Zoom, but you know, you can do a live Q&A um, and then you can release that on your platform. You can do Facebook Lives, you can do Lives on Instagram. So there are so many ways in which we can still essentially do what we what we would like to do, what's in our regular program, but just a little bit more differently. <laughs> um, I think one of the most important things is to know your audience. Um, I think that with social media, there is a case of you want to appeal to everybody and you're not going to and as soon as you 
realise who your audience is, I think that's when you're able to produce that content that really resonates with them. Um, I also think that it's great to, if you do have a website, um, just make as much use of that as possible. Um, make sure that you're putting as many regular updates there as possible and look into your analytics, see which pages people are visiting the most and then build up from there. Um, and I would also say probably the most important thing is just to have fun. Mm -hmm. um, I think social media is an amazing way to be creative and you can reach you know, thousands of people all over the world and you know, if one person picks up on that and, and finds it engaging, then you've done a really good job. So mm -hmm. just have fun and don't be afraid to try something new. <laughs>
and you then make that known for people meet. So I hope this helps and I hope you're all staying safe there and that we're getting by and through this together. Take care and stick in. Bye bye. Thank you very much for joining us for this webinar on how community organisations have adapted, particularly around their, their online uh, sort of community engagement. So I'm delighted to be joined by representatives from Tartoro Community Council. Could you just introduce yourselves for me, please? Hello there, I'm Bob Watson. I'm the chairman of Tartoro Community Council. And I'm Lindsay Flory, I'm the secretary of the Community Council. That's great. Thank you very much for, for joining us for this webinar to share your experiences as a community council um, during the current pandemic. I wonder if you could just give us a bit of an overview about what the Thorough Community Council has done, how they've adapted um, and changed locally to respond to the pandemic. Right, well, first of all, we contacted every household in, in, the, uh, in our area uh, to tell them about arrangements we'd made for emergency contacts and uh, basically a resilience plan so that people had numbers to phone uh, when they were needing uh, in emergencies or if they were needing help with groceries or collecting medicines, whatever. And uh, that, uh, that has worked very well. The folks that, uh, whose numbers were on the list uh, simply had a, a wee uh, band of volunteers whom they could uh, put into action. And Lindsay, how has that changed from what would be considered normal business for your community council? I think our community is divided into several sections, so people, everybody does know everybody, and each part of the community council has a sort of integrated network anyway. But we did decide to continue with our community council meetings. I don't think we've missed a single meeting, Bob. We have not. We? No, no, no. Um, so we decided to go with Zoom. The meetings are usually shorter than the regular meetings. Maybe that's a very good thing. We focus on what we're supposed to be talking about rather than the chit chat. Uh, and we've been core at every single time. And mm. to our delight, we've actually had members of the public join us on Zoom. Um, at your suggestion, Derek, we put notices on the notice boards saying we're meeting by Zoom. This is the contact telephone number. And then you would be given the link. And it's we've had as many people join us as we do at our live meetings, yep. haven't we, Bob? That's right. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, but the only folks that have uh, not managed to join us so far have been our police representatives, but uh, we keep them informed. So, in terms of your, your online engagement, is that something that prior to COVID the Community Council were, were considering? Is it something you've been looking at or is it, was it just Absolutely been Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no uh, it's not that I was unfamiliar with Zoom, but uh, I think I, I, was heard it. I was probably in the minority there. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and, However, uh, the, uh, uh, we uh, went for Zoom just simply as a, re uh, as a reaction to COVID since we could not meet uh, physically uh, and uh, it has uh, worked out remarkably well. It just happens that I'm using Zoom and other, with other organisations as well as I, and I know Lindsay yeah, is too. Very much so. so what's your experience been like then of the online engagement if you compare it to what it's like sitting in a cold village hall? to sitting in your, in your home engaging. What's that engagement been like for you? I think it's been very good, Bob. Not too Everybody's much. had a voice. Bob's a wonderful chair, so everybody is given the opportunity to speak, um, which I think can sometimes be a problem with the Zoom meeting if you've got too many. But the Community Council is a good size for everybody to speak. Yes, it And is. we've discussed some quite thorny issues, actually. It, yes, we have. And, uh, and, and we are actually, I think, doing the business uh, properly right and it, it's, it's really working uh, and uh, folks uh, are, are able and um, I'm not sure uh, what well, one of the the options that we have with a zoom meeting is to record it uh, we haven't done that so far because we've just been using uh, standard minutes but uh, if if there was a demand uh, to to watch a, a recording then it could be arranged excellent 
So as you'll know, Dumfries and Galloway's got a number of community councils established across the whole um, region, mm. and everyone will be facing similar challenges. You know how to continue business as normal with the you know the face to face meetings and such like, and how they can continue to operate to represent their communities. You're also doing a great job here in Tathorold. But would you like to maybe give some? You know, key highlights or some of the considerations that you would maybe like to pass on mm. to any of your other fellow community councillors who are maybe considering this? From my point of view, the absolute highlight is that the most vulnerable people in any community are actually not ever going to engage with technology, partly because they may not have the skills, they may not have the equipment, but also it does require a bit of dexterity um, and it is very difficult for people we are going to run some courses in the village mm. halls in the future to help people to send a photograph of themselves or some, if, to the GP, for example. But I think a really important thing is telephone contact, hearing a voice live, yeah. but also our village notice boards. Everybody has been walking during COVID. I've seen people with legs I didn't know they had. <laughs> and actually, we're going to, up, we're going to upgrade our notice yes. boards, aren't we, Bill? We're very fortunate that we have the funds to do that uh, and we're, we're, we have already been looking into uh, different manufacturers of notice boards so folks can uh, uh, use our, our data if they want and uh, find out what we've managed to find out so far about the best people to contact. Yeah. Not, no one way works for everybody. You need to give people information by as many routes as possible. And we've just, mm. we've just delivered our latest community uh, village new, uh, news, newsletter, yeah, newsletter exactly. which has been beautifully done by, by Pauline Deer Magic. Yes, she does a lovely job. So if we now think beyond the, the current pandemic, beyond COVID-19 to what will become the new normal, and thinking about the, the elements of your online engagement that you've been doing, do you think that the, the community council here in Tathorough would continue to use online engagement? Is there, is there other methods you're maybe looking at considering? And what, what benefits do you think that will bring to your community going forward? Online engagement to me is uh, plan B rather than plan A. I think uh, it's been not, not noticeable that uh, some members of the community council, some important members of the community council, haven't been able to join us for very good reasons. In uh, in in one in one instance, it's because uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the computer that they have is very, very important to them and they don't want to take the slightest risk of using it online. In another case, they just don't have the computer skills. Uh, and uh, so we certainly do not want to disenfranchise these people, uh, which means basically that our standard model will be to meet in village halls as we always have done. I think the one thing that I, I think we, we do need to do as a community council is to get a better Facebook page. I'm not a Facebook fan. I use it for specific purposes, but that's another thing we're going to look at, having yes. a better Facebook page so that you can use Facebook and, and, and as another technology to reach people. So do you think then, as a community council, and, and you know, you, mixing with technology, mixing with the, you know, the experiences that you've had, there's maybe opportunities to recruit new members of to the community council with particular skills in digital technology, for example. We've got a huge number, Bob being one yeah. of them, of people with wonderful IT skills. Um, but well, I discovered somebody else at the last meeting, Bob, yes, actually. Yes, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely it's super. Uh, no, it's, it's great. The, the skills that we have available uh, are just uh, magic. And sometimes it's uh, it, it's just what we have been used to, being, uh, to do. Um, and that's that, another thing that's also leapt out at me, that we... we there are so many people in the community with skills that we don't know about. Yeah. Perhaps something that we could do for the future is to have a list. I mean, for the resilience plan, we have a list of farmers who could clear the snow, that sort of thing. But there are other skills, um, and maybe we could we could do better with having a list and knowing the people in mm. the community. Yeah. We have a pharmacist who's delivered some drugs for people because they've been coming home with some prescriptions. We've mm. had somebody mending lawnmowers. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. great um, people in the, in the village. Oh yes, what, a whole lo a whole lot of skills yep. that we can yep. tap into, and because it's a nice, uh, it, it's it's a community where people know each right. other. Right. Uh, people are willing to donate their skills without any any problem yep. at all. 
Excellent. Well, Bob, Lindsay, thank you very much for your time um, and to the wider Tuthorough Community Council for your support um, and delivery during the COVID. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Thank you very much, Derek. I'm Claire Brown and I'm the Operations Manager at Third Sector in Freeston Gallery. These have clearly been strange times for us all and not without their challenges. But throughout this time, Third Sector in Freeston Gallery has continued to operate and continued to support communities and third sector organisations across the region. All of our staff team have remained working during this time, continuing to provide support, albeit working differently and working from home. And whilst our offices in Dumfries, Stranraer and LBT are currently closed, we have continued to provide the support as we always have. We've had to overnight embrace new ways of working using digital technologies such as Zoom and Teams to allow us to have the conversations that we would always have had, whether that be internal meetings we can continue to have our team meetings, whether it's engaging with our partners or whether it's providing support to the many organisations that we would be working with. It's important that third sector organisations and communities across the region know that we're currently and still here to help and that if anyone needs to access support from our engagement officers, our funding officer or our volunteering officer, they can continue to do that through accessing our website at www.tsdg.org.uk or by telephoning us in the normal way. But despite continuing to offer those core services, we've clearly had to adapt and meet the needs of our communities as we meet the challenges of COVID-19. Our focus has very much been on volunteering and in recent weeks, we've successfully recruited over 1,300 willing volunteers across the region and this has formed part of the core local response to COVID, ensuring that we're meeting the needs of the most vulnerable in our communities. We've also had a clear focus on funding, ensuring that we maximise the amount of funding being brought into the region to help our organisations meet the challenges of COVID and continue to operate beyond. Our communications arm has also strengthened and we've been using digital technologies to further boost this work. We've continued to deliver our twice weekly bulletins using our social media to communicate effectively with third sector organisations and the public across the region. But also we've spent time developing the DG Resilience Map which allows people to access the wide range of businesses, third sector organisations and community groups that are clearly offering valuable support at this time. Looking forward, we need to continue embracing this technology as we don't know when the, our face-to-face -face work will be able to resume. Much of the work that we've offered in the past has been face-to-face -face and out in our communities. And so we're keen that we use digital technologies to continue to deliver this support. At the start of July, we will be launching an online programme of support surgeries, where organisations can book time with our staff to talk one-to-one, -one, and also delivering weekly seminars and training workshops to upskill and further increase the capability of our groups across the region. All of these will be promoted through our social media and through our bulletins, and we would encourage everyone to participate and access the support that we're offering. The third sector has clearly pay, played a vital part in the response to COVID, using new technologies and embracing digital technology to do it effectively. And we hope that by using these technologies ourselves, we're continuing and to support and maintain a resilient and sustainable third sector for the future. Thank you.